Good evening, I'm Dr. Ahmad Lewis, and this is Entitled News, where knowledge meets curiosity and insight becomes our entitlement. On August 8, one of the worst wildfires of the 21st century ravaged the Hawaiian island of Maui. Many people are concerned that this is the start of a land grab that would not only displace families but also obliterate Hawaiian culture. For many native Hawaiians, the fear over the land grab is deeply rooted in their history, dating at least to 1893, when the independent kingdom of Hawaii was overthrown for political and financial gain by American and foreign businessmen. Hawaii had multiple thriving island kingdoms for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Then, in 1795, King Kamehameha I unified all of the islands and formed one thriving, prosperous kingdom with a royal family, working government, domestic production, and foreign trade, social welfare programs, etc. for more than 100 years. Lahaina was known for its abundant resources, which is why it became the capital of this thriving kingdom of Hawaii before it was changed to Honolulu. It was incredibly wealthy, an important place, and a playground. Christian missionaries kept coming to the island. Plantation interests came in, reverted streams, drilled wells to take groundwater resources, and essentially sucked the life out of what was an incredibly vibrant community. The seed of government changed with the impacts of colonization. Establishing American colonies and plantations. Like they always do, they slowly took over like a virus, subverting and stripping the Hawaiian people of their rights and their own power through small changes in laws and taking land bit by bit. In 1893, Queen Liliuo Kalani was imprisoned in her own palace by rich, white American plantation owners and the U.S. military. While she was imprisoned, the Americans on the island formed the Republic of Hawaii and made it a territory, against her wishes and the wishes of the Hawaiian people. It was then made a state in 1959. In 1993, President Bill Clinton signed legislation apologizing for the U.S. role in the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy. The apology, meant as a means of reconciliation with native Hawaiians, acknowledges the historical significance of the event, but it does not provide federal recognition to native Hawaiians as other federal laws provide to Native American tribes. Yet unlike other indigenous people here on the mainland, they do not have a reservation or a designated space just for them to keep their own sovereign lands. It's essentially a confession from the United States, and legally, when you admit to anything, there are consequences and repercussions. Native Hawaiians have yet to have a reconciliation procedure. It takes two parties to reconcile, and if one group is ready to sit at the table and the other claims they don't know where the table is, that's why there hasn't been any reconciliation. Over time, more and more mainlanders have moved there, establishing families and growing, and more and more tourism has sprouted up because it is a stunningly beautiful place. This has systematically displaced indigenous Hawaiians from their own land, making it so they cannot afford to live in their own nation. Only 40% of native Hawaiians, or Kanaka Maoli, live on Hawaiian land. Kanaka Maoli which means, native person, or, real Hawaiian, is also used to describe people who are striving for sovereignty and exploring and reclaiming their cultural identity. Unfortunately, what happened with the wildfires was closely tied to the history of Hawaiian colonization in Hawaii. Of course, global climate change has exacerbated the problem, but native Hawaiians would not be in this scenario in the first place if it weren't for colonization. The essential point to remember is that the Hawaiians never sought or consented to become a part of the United States or give up their sovereignty. It was taken away by the United States. Now the fires have gutted and devastated one of the largest populated areas on Maui and among all of the islands in general. Most of the land that caught fire on Maui was used for agriculture. Acres of sugarcane and pineapples were planted and left desolate. Invasive plants were introduced as livestock forage, creating what would essentially become a tinderbox for wildfires. More than 100 lives were lost, burning over 2,200 structures and resulting in an estimated $6 billion in damages in historic Lahaina. The land vultures are already there, trying to buy burned land or property from desperate Hawaiians and offering far below value. One of the tactics used by those seeking to exploit the situation in Maui is by making below-market offers, playing on fears of foreclosures and the cost of rebuilding. 
Then that developer will build more condos and Airbnbs, which reduces housing for Kanaka Maoli even further. Democratic Hawaii Governor Josh Green has proposed a ban on land sales in Lahaina, stating that measures will be taken to prevent the loss of land to outside interests. My intention from start to finish is to make sure that no one is victimized by land grabs, Green said at a news conference. People are right now traumatized. Please do not approach them with an offer to buy their land. Do not approach their families, saying they'll be much better off if they make a deal. Because we are not going to allow it. Many Hawaiians have lost the only homes they had and could afford, and many of them likely did not have insurance due to the immense expense of insuring property there. They won't be able to afford to find a new home on the island with the cost and limited availability of housing already. With skyrocketing housing prices and Airbnbs taking over available homes, condos, and apartments like a raging infection, most Hawaiians who live in Hawaii live in homes that have been owned by several generations of family, and they often live with two to four generations under one roof because they cannot afford to buy their own land or buy or rent homes. Hawaiian native, Pale Kulani is using his Instagram platform to inform people on social media of the land grab that residents are facing. If we are going to make something go viral, this is one that should go viral as soon as possible because we need to make sure we keep our people here. Kulani said in an Instagram reel. We need to urge our state leaders to make sure that our lands cannot be sold to anyone else. Yes, it may be soon, as people are still struggling out there, but we need to urge our leaders to create policies right now because those things take time. As we approach the one-month mark since Maui was ravaged by wildfires later this week, here are the latest updates on recovery efforts. The confirmed death toll remains at 115, where it has stood for nearly two weeks now. 58 victims have been identified by Maui police. The Lahaina fire is now 100% contained, with the fires impacting 2,170 acres. The Kula fire is 95% contained, and the Olinda fire is 90% contained. Maui Fire Department says putting out the fires completely will take some time, but they assure that they pose no active threat to any communities. Meanwhile, the unsafe water advisory continues for residents in some Lahaina and Upper Kula areas. Residents are currently unable to re-enter the Lahaina disaster zone. Plans are underway to ensure a safe return, limited to authorized personnel. Authorities seek public help in finding those missing due to the wildfire. I had a conversation with our CEO at the Space Entertainment Network, Tony Mack, who is a native from Hawaii, and he shared his thoughts on this tragic disaster, my heart is deeply saddened and filled with frustration as I witness and learn about the distressing events unfolding in Hawaii. I'm expressing my affection and solidarity for my beloved homeland, Hawaii. In the wake of the devastating fires that have swept through Lahaina, Maui, our hearts are heavy with concern for our friends and Ohana facing this unprecedented challenge. The resilience of the Lahaina community is an inspiration to us all. We stand united in sending our deepest thoughts, prayers, and aloha during this time of profound healing. Together, we become a beacon of unwavering support, illuminating the path towards restoration and renewal. In unity, we find strength to mend the wounds, lift the burdens of the heart, and rekindle the flame of hope that burns brightly within us all. This is a testament to the true spirit of Maui Strong with boundless aloha and solidarity. Every day, the native Hawaiians are providing increasingly updated accounts of this crisis, shedding light on concerns related to the U.S. government and prominent figures like Oprah, among others. These concerns encompass issues such as land acquisition, smart city initiatives, and the alleged use of directed energy weapons, DEW. Please stay connected with the Space Entertainment Network as we continue to follow this distressing story of the Maui wildfires along with other significant events as they come to our attention. Remember to show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel for more engaging news that leaves no story untold, no truth unexplored, and that shapes our world as we know it. I'm Dr. Ahmad Lewis. Good night, and thank you for watching.